What's up, YouTube? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my home gym. Now, wait, 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 seriously? What? I thought I was gonna do the home workout video. No, Kenzie, you're not even supposed to be in this video. Just finish your workout oh. and then get out. <laughs> okay, I see how it is. I just made some oatmeal. It exploded all over my bowl, all over the microwave. I'm gonna clean that up in a second. But to get into this video, what I wanna talk about is number one, I live in New York City. So my apartment is very, very small. I don't have much space to work with. The other thing is I live very high up in the sky. I'm not on the ground level. So I can't bring in like a squat rack or a deadlift platform. So this video is gonna focus on number one, what you could make for a compact gym, how to get the most out of a very small space and also, if you're not able to get a ton of heavy weights, how to get the most out of the least amount of weight while still being able to gain strength. And to start this video, I'm gonna begin with a list of the top three pieces of equipment that I own, which for whatever it's worth, this was very hard for me to do. I have a ton of equipment, I'm gonna show you all of it, but I wanted to break it down into what I consider the top three pieces of equipment. The most efficient, the most effective, the best for saving space, and also just the best for building strength, endurance, and improving your overall health. So, with that said, Let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna start off with the absolute best piece of equipment I have, which is, hold on one second. <laughs> Holy shit, it worked. All right, so it's these power block dumbbells. Now I've had this exact pair, literally this exact pair ever since I was 18 years old. It was the first piece of gym equipment I ever bought. I got it from a store called Gym Source on Route 9 in Framingham, Massachusetts. If you're from the Massachusetts area, leave a comment and let me know. They were 300 bucks, by far the best investment I've ever made in my home gym ever. Without question, there's so much you can do with it. They go from two and a half all the way up to 50 pounds. There is an attachment you can get that goes all the way up to 90 pounds, but for whatever it's worth, I don't think it's worth it. Generally speaking, when you get really, really, really big adjustable dumbbells, the bigger they get, the more bulky they get, obviously, and the more awkward it becomes. There's plenty of stuff you can do with just up to 50 pounds, and I've found these to be, without question, the best investment I've made in my home gym. Now, I'll be putting the links to all of my gym equipment in the description, but a couple things to note about this specific model is number one, I don't think they make this exact model anymore. Obviously, power blocks are a very popular brand of dumbbell, and I could not recommend it enough. Having adjustable dumbbells is so, so beneficial. You don't have to get a huge rack of dumbbells. Literally, you can have up to 50 pounds in what is a total space of just two dumbbells. But this is made out of metal, which is one of the reasons I think it's been so durable. I think now, for more cost-effective purposes, they make it out of a hard plastic. So they are a little bit bigger if you get the power block variation, but still, I've used them and they're fantastic. A lot of people ask me about the Bowflex options and I've used the Bowflex as well. I think the Bowflex are easier to use. The issue I've found with the Bowflex model is though is they're way more delicate. So I've had clients and online coaching clients and even family members and friends using the Bowflex model for something like a farmer's walk and they put the dumbbell down a little bit too hard and it breaks and they have to get a new one and they have to get it shipped in and blah, 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 it's a whole big deal. I've had these for, again, over 10 years They've never broken, I've never had an issue with them, and I also have used the newer models as well. I've never seen them break. So even though adjusting the dumbbell weight takes like, I don't know, two and a half seconds longer than the Bowflex model, I think it's worth it because these don't break. I've dropped them, I've got them all over the country, they've been everywhere, like these things have been through the ringer and they've never ever caused me one ounce of trouble. So power block adjustable dumbbells from two and a half all the way up to 50 pounds is without question the most important piece of equipment I would recommend in your home gym. Okay, now for the second most important piece of gym equipment I have in my home gym is, hold on, I wanna, I wanna see if I can do this magic trick. One sec, one sec, bear with me, bear with me. Come on, you can do this, you can do this. One sec, here we go, ready? You ready? Come on, three, two, one. Oh God, Jordan, you were just the coolest man with your video editing and your magic tricks and your kettlebells. Anyway, this is my second favorite piece of equipment in my entire home gym. I'm gonna explain why in a second, but first and foremost, if you can't get an adjustable dumbbell set because they're a little bit too expensive, just get a kettlebell. A 20 kilogram or a 24 kilogram is totally fine. I have the 24 kilogram. Generally speaking, if you're an intermediate to advanced lifter, go for the 24. If you're more of a beginner novice lifter, go for the 20 kilogram. The best thing about the kettlebell is number one is it's incredibly space efficient. It doesn't take up much space at all. 
The second best thing, or maybe even the best thing about the kettlebell is there's so much you can do with it. You can do goblet squats, you can do kettlebell swings, you can do Romanian deadlifts, you can do single leg Romanian deadlifts, you can do overhead presses, you can do push presses, you can do snatches, you can do cleans, you can do jerks. You can do so damn much with this one single kettlebell. Quite honestly, I think it is the most underrated piece of equipment in terms of all gym equipment. Literally out of every single piece of gym equipment in the world, I think kettlebells are the most underrated specifically because of how versatile they are and how space efficient they are and also how cost effective they are. And you know what? Actually, I'm gonna do a giveaway right now. So if you made it this far in the video, first and foremost, thank you. Second, I'm gonna pick one person to win a free kettlebell of your choosing. You can pick either a 24 kilogram or a 20 kilogram kettlebell. I'll ship it directly to your house. To enter, all you have to do is number one, subscribe to the channel. Number two, like the video. Number three, comment, I want that kettlebell. I'll pick one of you and I'll ask you if you prefer the 20 kilogram or the 24 kilogram and I will ship it directly to your home. What the? Where did it go? What the f Where did it go? All right, this is slightly embarrassing. I was gonna show you my third favorite piece of gym equipment that I have here in my home gym, but it's gone. I'm gonna try one thing. This might be weird. I wanna see if this works. But hold on one sec. Three, two, one. Oh my God, it worked. This is my third favorite piece of gym equipment. It's my Rogue Echo Bike. And no, I'm not being paid to say this. This is legitimately my favorite piece of conditioning equipment I've ever used. I like it way more than treadmills, way more than rowing machines, and I want to explain why right now. All right, so if you follow me on Instagram, you know I love strength training, but you also know I'm a huge fan of cardio. I think cardio is arguably the most overlooked form of exercise nowadays. And had you asked me five, 10 years ago, I would have said, no, cardio is the most overrated because most people weren't strength training, especially women. But now more and more people, men and women are strength training and they're overlooking their cardio, not just from a fat loss perspective, but more importantly, from a health perspective, blood pressure perspective, mental health, emotional health, physical health, cardio is super, super important. So with that being said, there are many ways to do cardio. You can run, you can bike, you can walk, you can swim, you can rollerblade, you can skateboard, you can scooter, you can do a fuck ton of things to do cardio and they're all great in their own right. But I found that the Rogue Echo Bike is without question my favorite tool to use for cardio. And from a home gym perspective, and especially a compact home gym perspective, it's a no brainer. This is the clear winner, especially compared to things like treadmills and rowing machines. For example, when we compare the Rogue Echo Bike to a treadmill, obviously, first and foremost, it's way smaller. Treadmills are big, they take up a lot of space, and especially in my small New York City apartment, there's no way I was gonna bring a treadmill in here. Second of all, and more practically speaking to the training side of things, when you're sprinting on a treadmill, you're putting a tremendous amount of stress on your joints, your ankles, your knees, your hips, your low back. It is a lot of heavy ground reaction forces going into your body. And for example, I do jujitsu. The only thing I do is not just strength training. I do jujitsu on top of it. I rollerblade. I like to be active. And if I'm aching or if I'm sore or if I get injured doing one of my other activities, Sprinting is basically automatically a no. There's just, I, I can't do it. It's too stressful in my body. Something like the Rogue Echo Bike, there is little to no ground reaction forces. There's nothing, there's no extra stress on my ankles, on my knees, or on my hips. It's so smooth. It's a really, really easy, simple way to get a conditioning workout in without stressing your joints and your tendons and your ligaments. The same can also be said for rowing machines. And even though those are lower impact than sprinting and running, they still can put a lot of stress on your lower back. Now I know people are gonna be in the comment section saying, well, if you do the rowing machine right, then it won't hurt your lower back. And yes, that's correct if you row properly, but most people have no idea how to row properly. And when you can just sit on a bike, and go as hard as you possibly can without worrying about hurting your ankles, hurting your knees, hurting your hips, hurting your back. I mean, it's just, it's a no brainer to me. Now, many people do ask me, and this is a valid question, if they could just substitute a spin bike instead of having to buy a Rogue Echo bike or an Assault bike. And the short answer is yes, of course, you can absolutely do that. And in fact, I actually think it would probably save you space because a Rogue Echo bike or an Assault bike probably takes up more space than a spin bike. But if you've ever tried a Rogue Echo bike or an Assault bike compared to a spin bike, it's, it's nowhere near the same. It, it is a completely different style workout. The spin bike is much more focused on your legs, obviously, and this, this will wreck your legs, but it's also a full body workout. Like you feel this from head to toe and it doesn't take nearly as long to get a training effect. So I'm a huge fan of the Rogue Echo bike. It's smooth, I've had no issues with it. The assembly took me about 30 to 45 minutes and I'm not really a handy person at all. It was very easy to do. So in terms of conditioning, 
there is no question this is my favorite piece of equipment in terms of how little it stresses your body, how easy it is to use, and how quickly you can get a great workout in. And if you know you need to be doing more cardio but you're not doing it, you don't wanna go outside, maybe you don't wanna be sprinting or running, it's too much stress in your joints, the Rogue Echo Bike, just plain and simple. And again, I'm not sponsored for saying this. They don't even know who I am or what I do. I bought this full price, and yes, it was very expensive for sure, but for my small home gym, it is without question one of my favorite pieces of equipment, and that's why I put it in my top three. All right, so here's the deal. Now that we went over my top three favorite pieces of equipment here in the home gym, now I'm gonna show you everything else that I have here. It's not gonna be in any order of importance, and I'm not gonna go into excruciating detail. I just wanna give you insight onto everything else that I've got. If you want to get some of the things that you see, all of the links will be in the description of the video. Before you move on, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you don't already. And now, before we talk about any equipment, I just wanna talk about these mats. So we've got two of these gym mats and honestly, they're amazing. They're each an eight by four and about a quarter of an inch thick. They do a really, really good job of mitigating the noise that we make. Again, we live in a high rise in New York. We've never had any complaints from our neighbors. They're super easy to clean and they don't curl up. I know a lot of gym mats, they curl up and you're tripping over them. These are amazing. We've had no issues with them. The link to buy them is in the description. As far as we know, it's a family that makes them. They have a small business, an Amazon store. We love supporting small business and this group, they've, they've done a tremendous job. So. Could not recommend these mats enough, especially if you're just looking for an affordable option that's gonna support a small business that has really, really, really great high quality workout mats. All right, so next up we've got this Rogue Resin 12 inch plyo box. Overall, a very good piece of equipment. There's one thing I don't like about it at all and would make me question whether or not I want to buy another one. I'll explain that in a second. Very sturdy, really good piece of equipment from that perspective. They colored it, they roughed it up a little bit to make it look more used, which I candidly I think is pretty cool and I like that as well. Mainly I use it for things like step ups, for hip thrusts, seated shoulder press, and this is really, really good to have, again, in a very small, compact home gym space. The only thing I don't like about it at all and this would make me question whether or not I wanna get one again, is the assembly was awful. And again, I'm not the handiest guy in the world, but I know other people who got this box as well and they said it was a bitch put to put together. So it was more complicated than it needed to be. It took a little bit more time, but very, very sturdy and in a very small, compact gym space, I like it a lot. This bad boy is my Rogue Strongman sandbag. It goes up to 100 pounds, and this is one of my all-time favorite pieces of equipment. I almost put this in my top three in this video. The reason I didn't is because most people don't need it, and most people can really get away without ever needing to use one. That being said, if your goal is higher level athletic performance, for myself, I mainly use it for jujitsu, but if your goal is higher level athletic performance, strongman competitors, powerlifting, or if you really wanna take your training to the next level, I cannot possibly recommend this enough. You can use it for squats, you can use it for lunges, you can use it for presses, you can use it for carries, you can use it for tosses. This for me is what I'm most passionate about. It's like sandbag training, kettlebell training. It's very like primal type movements. You just pick something heavy up like an odd object and you move it around. It's like real, real strength. It's fun to do. I will say a lot of sandbags, it's easy to get the sand messy all over your apartment. I was very hesitant to get this, but my, my buddy Mike Perry recommended it. Uh, he's an MMA coach, he coaches a lot of UFC fighters, and he said he has a bunch of these in his gym and he's never seen a speck of sand around. I've never seen a speck of sand in my apartment with this. I have other sandbags as well from Rogue. They do a great job of not letting the sand out. And again, I just can't recommend these enough. They are such a great piece of equipment. They don't take up much space and they're so, so efficient and effective for getting you brutally strong. These are my other sandbags. I'm absolutely in love with them. The bottom one is 65 pounds. The top one is 30 pounds. You can use them for everything. You can use them for cleans. You can use them for presses. You can use them for push presses. We use them a lot in here for hip thrust sometimes my fiance will stack literally the bottom one the top one and the strong male one on top of her while she does very heavy hip thrusts which is really nice because we don't have a barbell and sometimes it's it's difficult to do heavy hip thrusts if you don't have a barbell but these add up to a pretty significant amount of weight and they're also very comfortable very multifaceted very easy to use pretty affordable and again I've never seen a speck of sand in my entire apartment and I know I would be destroyed by my fiance if there was sand anywhere so if you're worried about getting sand anywhere, I can't recommend Rogue sandbags enough because they are very, very clean, super easy to use, and they don't cause a mess. 
These suckers are my two medicine balls. This one is more of a slam ball. It's lighter, it's only 10 pounds. I'm definitely not gonna throw it at my wall in this apartment building because I think my neighbors would actually have a conniption. But if you have a garage or if you have a brick wall to throw something at, you can definitely do that with a light slam ball like this. Huge fan of this type of training. This, I believe, is technically called a D-ball. I'm not sure why, uh, but it's 40 pounds. I use this for more heavy endurance type training, especially for jujitsu. I do stand-ups with it, I do tosses with it. Uh, with a lighter ball, I'll do more rotational med ball work with it. But for athletic performance and explosive power based training, these tools are absolutely incredible. This is obviously a physio ball. I didn't even buy this. I love physio balls. I think they're good for so many different things, but I live in a New York City apartment building and in apartment buildings here in New York, many of them, we have these trash rooms. So one day I was putting my trash away and while I was putting the trash in the chute, I saw that in the trash room, someone had left this. A lot of people on my Instagram have said that it's probably a birthing ball. I don't know what that means. I couldn't imagine someone giving birth on this, but maybe that's what they do. Either way, I was like, screw it, I'm taking it. And I use this for everything. I use it for a lot of core work, I use it for hamstring work, glute work. There are so many reasons why you should have a physio ball. Generally speaking, they're not very expensive. They're very, very affordable. And for whatever it's worth, my favorite move on this is so underrated. It's called a shelk, a supine hip extension leg curl. Fancy name for a very, very brutal, simple movement. I deadlifted four times my body weight and I very much believe that between sumo deadlifts, glute ham raises, and shelks, that's what got my deadlift so strong. And if you haven't tried a shelk yet, definitely give it a shot. It's incredible, it will light your hamstrings up and you're gonna be sore for days afterward. So could not recommend getting a physio ball enough. So you already know that I've got a 24 kilogram kettlebell. It was my top three favorites, but I've also got an 18 kilogram and a 32 kilogram. These, in my opinion, are the best weights to get if you can only have three total kettlebells. If you can only have one, get the 20 or the 24 kilogram. But if you can get three, I would get either a 16 or an 18 and a 32. The lighter weight's obviously better for upper body movements, overhead presses, push presses, snatches. The heavier weight's better for lower body movements deadlifts, single leg deadlifts, Romanian deadlifts, things of the sort. If you're more of a novice lifter, I would get a lighter weight kettlebell, so maybe a 12, 16, or an 18 for that upper body movement. And if you're more of an advanced lifter, you could get heavier than 32 kilogram, you could get a 40 kilogram if you want, uh, nothing wrong with that. But one of the major reasons I like the heavy kettlebell, the 32 kilogram, is because it's really good for explosive kettlebell swings. Most people suck at kettlebell swings, they have no idea how to do them properly. And if you go to a 40 kilogram or even above, you're, just, you're probably not gonna be able to do it. Not to mention the ball is gonna be too big, that's what she said. But sometimes the ball is actually too big to get through your legs to do an efficient kettlebell swing. So I think the 32 kilogram is probably your best bet. That's really it for all we've got here in the home gym. A couple more odds and ends. I always have a lacrosse ball. I have like five or six laying around, but super good for self myofascial release work, whether you're working on the bottom of your feet for your plantar fascia, your hips, the back of your shoulders. These are really, really good. You should always have one around. A good set of bands is super important. I got these from Westside Barbell about eight years ago and have not had any of them break or even tear. Super, super helpful. I don't think they make up for weight training, a lot of people ask if you could replace weight training with band training. I don't think you can do that, but I do think they complement it very well and they both have their own pros and cons. Finally, if you're gonna be doing heavy kettlebell training and or heavy barbell training, I cannot recommend getting chalk highly enough. It's super important. Unfortunately, it does get everywhere. Like it's, it's already all over myself and my pants, I don't know you can see this right now. It's actually, it's already all over my camera. We try to keep it in a plastic bag so it doesn't get everywhere, but it is gonna get everywhere. That being said, I think chalk is super important, especially if you're doing heavy kettlebell training, heavy barbell training. It's just, it's gonna help keep your hands a little bit more safe so they don't rip. And uh, a lot of people tell me that as they're lifting heavier and heavier weight, the bar keeps slipping out of their hands. Put some chalk on it. Helps create a little bit more friction between your hand and the bar so it's not slipping out and same goes for kettlebells. With all that said, one final thing before we finish the video, I wanna show you my mini fridge. I get a lot of questions about this on Instagram. This is what it looks like. Basically, we just have a ton of sparkling water. We're all out of kombucha right now. I'm obsessed with kombucha. So usually it's kombucha on the bottom and then a ton of different types of seltzer on the top. I don't know the price off the top of my head. It was very, very expensive but I'll show you, we have a very small fridge. We have small everything in New York. It's just like when you live in New York, it's small. So we have a really small fridge, really doesn't fit very much. Same thing with the freezer. These, these things are just, they barely fit anything. So 
we were running out of space in the fridge and we wanted to get another one just for our seltzer and our kombucha. So we consider that part of our home gym as well. Figured I'd show you that and I'll put the link to that in the description. So that is it. Let me adjust this camera really quick. That is my home gym. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please punch that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Don't forget you can enter to win a free 20 kilogram or 24 kilogram kettlebell. I will ship it directly to your front door. Just make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and comment, I want that kettlebell. So having said all of that, it is now time for me to get my own workout in. I'm gonna finish with this awful Satan's tricycle. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon.